Good morning, everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about political parties. Uh, political parties have been with the U.S. since the formation of the Constitution. It's an interesting question. Why did parties emerge? Well, there's the theoretical answer, which is it's very, very hard for a organized, unorganized group to make decisions. If you ever go into a staff meeting and there's not been any previous staff work and you just kind of say, well, what do you want to do? It's often difficult to come to any kind of decision. And so maybe parties are necessary. It may be necessary that people who are of similar like minds get together in advance, take a look, think of what they wanted to do, and then put together an agenda and which allow for people to either agree or disagree. If we take a look, of course, at early American history, there were some significant dividing points. Jefferson really did not want to do much in terms of economic development. He saw America as being a country as farmers, democratic, small, whereas people like Madison more, but particularly Hamilton and Washington, were more interested in economic development, putting together a national bank. Also, they split significantly in terms of what they wanted to do in terms of who they wanted to relate to. Washington felt very strongly that we had, despite our revolution, very strong ties with Great Britain. And he wanted to go and re-strengthen those and retire. Jefferson did not. He wished to maintain ties with France. He saw them as our allies in the revolution and therefore somebody to keep contact with. Now, parties in the United States, unlike in many countries, have divided into two groups. And it's been this way from the beginning. We've had a replacement party, which occurred to some degree in the 1860s, but we've only had really two parties. The difference is in countries such as Great Britain or France, they have proportional representation. If you get 10%, 15% of the vote, you get 10, 15% of the representatives in parliament. In the United States, we've always had winner take all. Everything's winner take all. And that means that if you mount a challenge and even get 20% of the vote, such as Ross Perot did in 1992, the best you can really hope to be is a spoiler. And in fact, what you may be doing is giving the victory to the other party, the party you like the least. So in our system, we kind of split in that direction. Parties have been with us from the beginning. And in fact, they, to a large degree, helped get our press going at times the Parties just used government offices to publish things and to further their own interests. It wasn't until later that we decided that was unacceptable. We also kind of look at parties in terms of who's in the party. Now, is the party those who are registered as Republicans or Democrats? Or does it include those who tend to vote Republican and Democrat, whether they have registered such or not? Are is the party, our parties more the organizations? We have county organizations, state organizations, federal organizations. You hear a lot about things like the Republican National Committee or the Democratic National Committee. Or is it really the parties no more than those who are running for office and those who got elected? It's very hard to say that it's beyond that. I mean, we can't, uh, our parties aren't given the option of going and telling a candidate, hey, you can't be a Republican. You can't be a Democrat. Oh, they may say it, but if that person registers as a Republican or as a Democrat and decides to run, they can't block it. The parties cannot block it. They can in Great Britain. They can in France, but they can't in the United States. So our parties are weak in that regard. Very often, 
driven by entrepreneurs, people who are basically seeking power and using party as a step stone to that. You can kind of see that to agree with our last couple of last candidates for president. Trump would never been a long-term Republican, but made a bid because he saw that as a way of coming to power. Bernie Sanders is an independent, and yet he ran as a Democrat in the Democratic primaries and did very well. So we most certainly understand that our definition of parties is not real clear. The one thing that is happening, of course, it always has happened, is change in our parties. The biggest change that uh, changes that have occurred were the disappearance of the Federalist Party and shortly after the year 1800. The emergence of the Republican Party and become the dominant party in 1860, actually 65. The emergence of the Democratic Party as the dominant party. And I mean, really dominant party for over 50 years and after 1932. We've also recently seen changes. At one time, 1950s, the Republican Party was the party of those who with greater education and greater median wealth. The typical Republican was a businessman. Our upper, you know, working class, any rate, people with somewhat a means. Democrats were the labor union people, often minorities, things of this type, but most certainly not in the South, of course, South was very segregationist for minor, some minorities. But we started seeing the change that's occurring in the 1970s. And what we started seeing is the solidly Democratic South and the solidly Republican Northeast started changing. Now the Northeast is predominantly Democratic, and the South is predominantly Republican. California used to be probably more Republican, at least more Republican than it was Democratic. And yet, recently, Republicans have no chance of running for statewide office and winning unless, of course, there's something unusual occurring, such as the recall of Gavin Newsom, and it will probably be framed in party allegiance terms, and he will probably remain in office. But parties are continuing to change. The Democratic Party is becoming the party of the more educated, the median income, not the average wealth, but the median income where the middle family follows. And Democratic uh, and the Democratic Party is increasingly higher than the Republican counterparts. Republican Party is suffering a uh, loss of minorities. George W. Bush received quite a few Hispanic votes. They've been far, far fewer. Recently, black vote has been overwhelmingly democratic. And the demographic changes in this country suggest that we will continue in this direction. But don't be fooled by that necessarily. One party rule, such as we have in California now, is not healthy. You need to have challenges during the general election. And the Republican Party doesn't want to be a party of the minority in the future. Oh, it sounds like it right now when you hear the way they're talking and most certainly voter suppression and all these type of issues are going on. But long term, they don't want to be a minority party. They want to be a party that can win national elections. They're not going to do that as a white only party. So what you're going to see is the Republican Party increasingly having people that are trying to reach out in different directions. And gradually, I would see the Republican Party will challenge, change and challenge the Democratic Party effectively as it has in the past. Will this occur overnight? I, I don't think so. The presence of Donald Trump as a ghost in the background, or some people would say a skeleton in the closet, most certainly doesn't allow for it to change very rapidly at this time. But it will happen. And of course, as it happens, it will also force changes in the Democratic Party. I hope this gives you a flavor. Most certainly, this is not a replacement 
for the modules or for the text. But I hope it gives you a flavor, kind of give a feel that this is an area which is very important. Political parties help us frame issues. But it's also an area that will considerably change over time. Thank you. Bye.